What's today? October? It's Nudie Magazine Day! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for Dirty Magazine Day. We're going with the option two magazine today. Do it yourself. Tuning car making perfect guide. Nobody proofreads this shit. At least they didn't. Um, we've got some snap-on stickers in here. It was 780 yen. I'm not sure what year this is from, um, but it looks pretty old. So, uh, yeah. Without further ado, let's get into it. First page, we've got some Advan AD07s. Uh, yeah, maybe that's a hint to what year this was for you, but I don't know personally. Keep cruising. They've, they've, um, they've shelled out for a two-page ad here. They must have had money back in the day. Over we go. We've got uh, more ad. We've got carbon fiber this and carbon fiber that. Carbon fiber, all the things. Wings and little wings. There's a lot of cool stuff going on there. Yes, indeed. Very cool indeed. Have a pause. Have a look. Enjoy. Over we go to the origin. Origin. Oh, oh, I see what you've done there. Origin Al parts origin labo dot jp to see more they've got carbon door inners i wonder if this is the same it is it's the same company so they've done the uh the old two page spread as well got that money origin usa look they've got it there it's in where is that that's in illinois interesting interesting okay origin carbon fiber doors inners door inners um if you're after that sort of thing Get a hold of Origin in 2000 and whatever this magazine was. Over we go. The 50 name something big chance. I'm not sure what that kanji is. If you know, let us know in the comments. Um, yes, yes. We've got lights for R32, R33, R34 Skylines and the JZX100 Chaser. Ooh, that's the way the Mercedes Benz over here with some... I guess the HID headlamps. Yeah, nah. LED from Kazama over here. Got some suspension bits, a front fender, some wing mirrors. Big fan of those. Uh, do like it. They're from Dungun, Dangun, Dangun Racing. Check those out. Over here we have some multi link spaces. Multi link spaces down here. The DIY parts, some brake pads. They are DIY. Everyone should know how to change their own brake pads. Although it's not as easy as um, some people make it out to be, especially when you can't get the correct grease and things for them. Although you're probably not living in Japan, so you'll probably have no trouble. Um, we got some springs, some four hole and five hole wheel hubs. I guess that means hub. Um, I think that's Kolkan, which means to change, to swap from four to five holes. Uh, because S13s, uh, C33s, A31s, these are interchangeable or something, I believe. Down here we've got the Eurus. Uh, these are the, uh, I can't read that, but I know what it means. It means uh, it, it increases the angle of your wheels when you, you can steer, when you're steering. Increases steering angle there you go that's what those do they're just a washer basically over we go we've got some exhaust systems the old hks super sqv this is the sqv they're up to sqv5 i think so this is very old very old indeed down here we've got the mushroom filter we've got an intercooler kit oil cooler kit We've got the Blitz SBC eye color, um, and it's uh, Doki Doki monitoring, so it's like gives you butterflies. Interesting. Up here we've got the the Defi. I mean, this has uh, intake manifold pressure. Cool. I didn't know that existed. I have to get one of those. This is so good. They still use it. Um, Blitz are doing gauges too. Sigma has a seat. Ready has a full turbo timer. You know how I feel about those. Yuck. 
uh, Profec. They don't look like that anymore, I can tell you. Oh, you remember this craze where everybody had snap-on uh, screwdriver handles for their keys? I never got into that because I could never afford them. I wasn't really into the fad either. Um, okay, these <laughs> bookends. Snap-on bookends. It doesn't have a price there, but I bet you they're uh, several hundred dollars because snap-on. Okay, snap off. Over we go. Our classic HKS mushroom filter. The airflow. Feel it flow. Dope. Okay. Ooh, check it out. Some snap on stickers and yo, that option to sticker. Can you have it? No, you cannot. I'm keeping it. That's mine. Look at that sticker. Yo. You can't buy these anymore. And if you can, I bet you they're expensive. Over we go, need to be careful not to damage that. We have a contents page, DIY Dorisha make. We're gonna make a drift car. Okay, what are we starting with? Um, I'm not sure what that is. Is that a C33? I'm not really sure. Over we go. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that is. Okay, over we go, over we go, over we go. Oh, oh shit, there it is. I don't know what it is. Um, I should know what that is. Is that an old chaser? Maybe. I should know what that car is. I think it's an old chaser. Ah, uh, it's a C33. Why don't you just read it, dude? Jeez. This is a normal C33 Laurel. Um, it's Pika Pika, which means it's very clean. Um, it's a very clean machine. It's, an, it's an incredible machine. It's a beautiful machine. It's an amazing machine. Uh, what are we doing? We're cutting some stuff. We're, uh, we're fitting IKEA formula stuff. So basically we're spending a lot of money on it. Okay, over we go. This dude looks happy about it. A DIY making. Okay, over we go. Wow, we're doing a lot to it. So what have we done? We have, uh, we're removing, wait, where do we start? We we'll start here. Oil paint. So in Japan, we don't say, uh, well, we, yeah, we, 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 I'm not, I'm not from Japan. In Japan, they don't say to paint a car, they say oil paint. I don't know why, they just do it. Oil paint, to oil paint a car. So what's he doing? He's sanding, sanding the bonnet, sanding the doors. I'm not sure what, yeah, 400 grit sandpaper here. So sand the whole car with 400 grit sandpaper. Um, take everything off that you can. And then uh, mask it, put masking tape on the windows. Um, then what are we doing? I think we're cleaning it with uh, like to get wax and grease remover. And then just, just simply spray it. Okay. Then peel the masking off. Well, they're putting a ma mascot on or something. I'm not really sure what's going on there. There's a bit too much reading involved. Not going to get involved. Um, so we've, we've, we've painted the car. We've gone from this. Now, I guess with this color, where are we starting? We're starting um, fender. Oh, we're rolling the fenders. You have to roll the fenders in order to pit, put wheels on that are too big. Um, and then where do we begin? Where do we begin? We begin... Um, <clears throat> oh, wait, this is this is a, like a loop. Where the hell do we start? Where do we start, man? Where do we start? I guess... Oh, we start, start here. Okay. So the sh we're putting shadow aero on. So we, we uh, got our bumper, our side skirts, our so front bumper, side skirts, rear bumper. We fit those up magically. They're automatically painted. Don't worry about that. Um, over here, and here we go. Check it out. It looks great. Now we need to uh, wait. What is it painted or not? Painted. I don't know what we're doing. Wait, we we haven't painted it. All of a sudden we've painted it. Then we have finished it. Now we're adjusting it with the uh, angle grinder to make it fit properly and attaching it and we're painted again. Weird. Okay, anyway, I would probably do that first. We'll test fit it when it doesn't fit because n none of these Japanese kits fit. Adjust it, get it to fit, paint it, fit it. Wait, no, fit it, paint it. Oh, Jesus. I don't know. Paint it and then, yep. I don't know what's going. Let's just keep going. Jeez. Right, suspension. You gotta lower it. Wait, hang on. We haven't we already we've already painted the car. 
We. This is weird, man. We already painted the car, but here you can see the the car's not painted yet. Or oh, okay, all right. Um, maybe I'm reading the book backwards, but the contents page. Yeah, all right, okay, whatever. Anyway, um, let's just ignore the weirdness of this and um, and keep going. So suspension, we're doing coilovers. Um, jack up your car, take the wheels off and uh, remove the old suspension, fit the new suspension and uh, voila, good to go. Over here, pillow, pillow tension rod, pillow tension rods, you need to do that um, so that you can adjust the caster and whatnot. So, um, yep, take that out and put that in. I don't know why those arrows are backwards, but okay, whatever. Um, tie rod. You want uh, adjustable tie rods, longer tie rods, so you can have more angle. Done that. Rear, rear, upper arm, and rear toe, 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 toe adjuster. A uh, toe adjust. Rear toe adjust. Rear toe adjuster, of course. Um, rod change. Okay, there. We've done it, and we're complete with IKEA form. There's like, there's like two thousand dollars worth of parts just there. Holy crap! Right, um, we're doing the. Uh, they're cutting the reinforcement uh, bar so that they can fit the uh, intercooler behind the bumper. See, old mate's happy about doing that. He won't be happy once he crashes, and then the whole thing caves in because it's been cut. Um, now we've put a blitz. Um, logo on there lettering they call it put a blitz sticker on there and then spray paint it like a stencil um what are we doing here the engine they pull it um they're doing something with the engine i think they're doing a harness tuck like an engine wiring tuck not a hundred percent sure but um we'll find out next time on wait we're here well, no, we've changed the subject. We're putting a full bucket seat in. If you are drifting and you don't have a full bucket seat yet, I highly recommend it because a, a semi-bucket just doesn't hold you well enough, in my opinion. Um, also, changing to a different steering wheel is a very good idea. I would recommend something without lumps in it, just a smooth, smooth wheel. You're going to need seat rails. So, from this... Get rid of that. Take that out of the car. Be careful not to scratch anything. Chuck this bad boy in, and you're good to go. Next up, an item of very high um, controversy in the U.S. is bolt-in cages. Uh, Americans l dislike them, and they claim that they make the car unsafe. Um, well, yeah, okay. I disagree with you on that 100%. Sure, a welding cage will probably be better than this, but not having it, not having this, is worse. So I think you're going to go from nothing to this to a welding um, in levels of safety. I would say I'd rather have this than not have it. Um, anyway, that's, that's all I have to say about that. Air cleaner, we're doing that. We're doing our exhaust system, our muffler, muffler change, boost controller. You need that, otherwise you're not gonna have all of the boost, and we're, we're suddenly here. Like, just like that, in one, two, three, four. Four steps. Uh, the style, it's got the style, drift car. It's become, it's become a drift car. It has. Look at it. That's sick. That's dope. DIY. Well, I mean, I guess most of this stuff, aside aside from the engine, I'm not sure what they've done. What? Wit? I'm not sure wit. I'm not sure what they've done here. I'd probably have to... Oh, wait. I think they've swapped from... Yeah, they've swapped from a RB20DE to an RB20DET. Um, I mean, if the harness isn't the same, that's going to be quite a job. So, DIY maybe, not impossible, but you need an engine crane. Do you have one? If you don't, you have to buy that. 
the rest of this stuff is all sort of simple tools like even uh, even spraying the car like back here masking tape you can buy that um, you can buy a small air compressor where, where were we spraying where were we spraying hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. here you can buy a small air compressor and a gun it won't come out perfect but it's a drift car and they're doing it a door closed respray which means the inside of the doors the door jams and everything else are um, like where's a shot of him with the door open uh, here so the inside of this door edge here is still going to be the old color they're not they're not doing it um, door like inside the doors and everything else they just do it on the outside so um, I mean you could do that at home that's that's not huge huge uh, huge job the thing about buying we, we, we've gone too far the thing about buying a engine crane is once you've pulled one engine once you've done it then what do you do with it what do you do with an engine crane once you've used it sell it or um, hang your laundry on it like they don't they, they just get in the way I've got one and like it's just in the way I've got engine hangers too in the way in the way they just eat up space so everything apart from that I would say yeah DIY to the max easy air compressor if you buy that you're always gonna have it you can always use it I'm rambling over we go over we go again we've seen that one we've got get super made style super made yo that looks dope yeah that is sick man so nice i love japan look at that we've got in exhaust manifolds we've got all sorts of parts there we've got uh upper arms we've got steering wheels by the looks of it i'm not sure if that is that a steering wheel no it's a dash mat never mind the steering wheels from somebody else lights the lights are cool I'm not sure I dig the lights I'd rather have OEM lights personally um, but the the coloring and styling of that is sick over we go Ooh, oh well, what are we doing here um, handmade best selection handmade parts best selection what are we doing we're we're doing a few things here the first thing we're doing is we are installing a number plate uh, a uh, Buddha Buddha pl pl um, Buddha Buddha bracket what is a Buddha Buddha bracket ah, I see what's happened okay so the way this works is it's two pieces of aluminium aluminium plate right aluminium plate aluminium plate joined by a hinge now the weight of the of the plate itself will hold this hopefully on an angle like this which would be legal um, actually no it's probably the weight of the plates probably going to hold it vertical up correct like like this but when you drive the wind hitting it will fold it up so if you get done by a speed like if you speed camera shoots you they won't be able to see your plate. Now that's not going to work in Australia because they they just zoom in on the um, on the registration label. But that's pretty like if you get pulled over by the cops, they're not going to know you've done that because the plate's going to sit properly, right? That's pretty um, cheeky, pretty cheeky. What have we got here? We've got a uh, this is the toolkit, and they've used some foam. They've cut it out. Um, and uh, they've made their toolkit look nice. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Over here, we've got the water spray. So they connect their washer jet up to this. I'm not sure what that is. That looks like a one-way valve, is it? Um, not sure what that is. But oh, they've got a separate... So here, they're connecting it up to the window washer. Here they're, they're installing their own um, water uh, bag and pump and everything else so that they can spray water on their intercooler to cool the engine down. That's actually probably the radiator, but anyway, you get the idea. Water sprayer. You can actually do this for your rear wheels when you're drifting because if you keep your wheels, yeah, sorry, your tires colder, uh, they'll last longer. Um, what are we doing here? We're doing... Uh, 
we, we're using a blinker lens, and what are we doing? Oh, we're putting a light um, un under the bonnet. Well, that's pretty interesting. To put a light under the bonnet, so or under the hood. It's a bonnet, you dickhead. Um, put a light underneath the uh, underneath the hood. So how have they done that? Is it just on all the time? Um, you could easily do that with a switch. You could easily do that with a switch. Engine room lamp. Um, oh, wait. Okay, so maybe they just connect it up whenever they need it. So they just use a, uh, uh, like a clip. So it's always connected to earth, right? But then you have this one wire that runs all the way up to it. Um, and then when you need it, you just clip it onto the battery and then it's it's always there. Yeah, that's that looks like how they've done it. You could actually do that with a switch, a bonnet switch. Um, that is uh, like uh, the uh, a handbrake switch would do it. You could use a handbrake switch so that when it's pressed down, it's off. When it's up, when the bonnet is up, it, uh, it connects it. You could do that. Uh, with this very easy mod. It's actually how uh, the bonnet trigger for alarms work. Anyway, I digress. That's how they've done it, just with a clip. This is probably, uh, I mean, this is foolproof, isn't it? You just plug it in or unplug it. Um, what are we doing here? The DIY parts. Um, I mean, air filters. Uh, what's this one? Eye lines. So you fit an eye line. Um, um, air fitting an air cleaner, bumper duct. Oh yeah, cut out a section of your bumper to let more air in. LEDs, um, LED key light. Okay, interesting. Down here we're using a uh, sub sun visor. Something about a sun visor. Oh, I see. It's like a um, it's a plastic sheet that's tinted. Okay, and this is a master cylinder stopper. Um, I don't actually know if these work. The idea is that when you push on the brake really, really hard, that's enough to make the master cylinder move. So this bolts to the uh, strut tower and has a adjustable bolt, so you can push the uh, master cylinder slightly. And then when, when and if the master cylinder moves away from your foot, this will stop it. I don't know if they actually do anything or not. Um, they probably do. Anyway, over we go. What are we doing? What the hell have we done here? Um, the oil can in a silencer. Right. Okay. So this is a silencer you... I kind of want to try this. This is so dodgy. I want to try it. Look what they've done. They open the lid, drill out a section at the bottom like this, and then like bolt it in there. Like drill a hole and bolt it in. This is a one liter oil can. Um, I mean, theoretically, you could do this with any can. That's wild. I kind of want to try that. Interesting. <laughs> it probably does shut it up, to be honest. What have we got over here? We've got the... Uh... Seven. Zaru no air cleaner. Um, what have we done? Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Look, they're they're using an, they're using a stainless bowl and a like a sift sifting bowl. Join them together with some sponge inside of it. Um, I mean, <laughs> this, this is. This is Dodge City, this is. I, I mean, it would work, but, um, yeah, that's going to be a no from me. That's pretty impressive that they've done that. I'm not sure how they got... They got a piece of pipe, and they've cut a hole in the bowl, and then they've bent... They've cut the pipe, and then bent it over, and they're going to pull it back, and then they use... I guess they use, like... Um, the sponge to hold it all together with this over the top and they're using just like metal clips to hold it together wild what is this this is a um, a piston shift a piston shift knob 
So they've taken a piston um, and they fill it a piston from what? I'm not sure what this piston is. Uh, a piston, 50cc bike piston. So they take that, they've uh, they fill it full of resin, drill it and tap it with the correct thread and then feed it on. Um, over here, what are we doing? We're doing the uh, audio cable um, earthing. Audio cable earthing. So you go buy some audio earthing cable, uh, you buy some ring terminals, and then you uh, you just go to town running it everywhere. That one isn't going to do shit. I'll just tell you that now. There's the big six. I'm not going to go into that. Look up earthing kits if you want to do this properly, and I think it's the big six. One thing to, to take note is the more money you spend on this wire, the better. And the reason I know that is because I bought not the cheapest wire I could get, but it was Cadence brand. It's a good, uh, like, it came recommended to me but I got it and I got it I got that particular one because it was uh, known for being really flexible so that I could hide it easily got it in the truck anyway long story short all of the ends corroded and um, and just rotted themselves off and that caused me to destroy an Odyssey battery so several hundred dollars uh, later yeah be careful about the wire that you buy um, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing here? We're doing the uh, the looks like a knee pad. It's a knee rest. Um, okay, I think that if you've got, I mean, it's just a piece, a couple of pieces of foam duct taped together and then stuck on. But I mean, if you you really should uh, install a bucket seat if you need something like that. Um, what is this? A bonnet damper using a bonnet damper on the engine. I mean, I guess you could, but the the amount of pressure that one of these supplies isn't going to be as much as a, a normal uh, engine damper. So I wouldn't have thought that would work as well. But I mean, look at the mount. The mount itself is going to shift. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm claiming myth busted on that one. No, 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 no. Okay, over we go. What do we get? This is really cool. I'm enjoying this. Um, Benia, so it's a, it's a wooden under, wooden under panel. So they've just, they've used a piece of, uh, veneer in Japan is uh, plywood, just regular ply. So they've traced this out and uh, made a, uh, like an under, under car cover f out of, um, out of plywood and the, that's cool what they've done is they've got a little piece of wood and then stuck a uh, stuck a hole in it with a pen through the hole right and then they just run the the piece of wood along the bumper with and that will mark that will mark the distance of the pen away from the bumper the whole way around and trace it perfectly cool idea and then did this did is painting it with regular old paint and it looks like that when it's done cool idea Kevin Fan actually does this. He's um, a bit of a famous drifter. I don't think he goes the whole way under like that, but he does make a uh, under under spoiler thing like that, like a canard type deal out of wood. Um, here we are using um, aluminium angle to. Uh, I'm not really sure what that is. This is the L angle. Um, it's a uh, Garni. Garni flap. Okay, whack it on your GT spoiler, and then have all of the um, air brakes. <laughs> um, I can't say I like that, but anyway, what are we doing here? We're doing the duct. Um, okay, so we've just bought some pipe, some flared ends, some aluminium tape, and uh, yeah, we've just sort of. Um, We've just bunged it in, basically. Yep. Oh, they used... What is happening here? Looks like they've used aluminium tape to... Um... Yeah, it's a stainless panel. Is this kitchen panel? Looks like they've used stainless kitchen panel across here to block that off. And then they've run their own um, cold air ducting from here. 
I wonder if that works. I'd say probably, well, I mean, the ducting is going to work, but I don't know why you would do that. Anyway, this is a DIY. We talked about it before. This is a L bracket stay master cylinder stopper. So we've got um, this little leg to a piece of metal with a thread in it and um, an L bracket. That is not going to uh, be sufficient if... If this moves, that will also move. I would say you're going to need at least 3mm steel uh, to stop it from moving, and I would want um, a bit of side support on that as well, not just an L. Um, myth busted, I don't think that will work. Over here, what have we got? We are, what are we doing here? Oh, this is for stopping your, um, your oil uh, spring, uh, oh yeah, the oil level gauge stopper, that's dope, all you need is a little spring, a zip tie, and a hook, and you can stop your oil gauge bouncing out, this happens on Sylvia's, um, S14's, white ones, owned by Ryan, um, ask me how I know this happens, PJ. Um, that wasn't your fault. Happened while you were driving it, though. Anyway, DIYs, um, we're going seven. What have we got? We've got, uh, the amp, amp leather, uh, Impreza, Impressa, sorry, Impressa, speaker, uh, no, sp no, spin, tan, knob. I don't know, um, I'm not, you know what, forget it, not gonna, we've got a, a bar made here, um, from seat belt to back in an Integra, here we've got LED gauges, DIY LED gauges, that would be interesting to see how that's done, I think this is just fitting DIY parts, and the speaker, speaker box, fitting, fitting DIY parts, so, anyway, over we go, over we go, I'm gonna leave the, uh, my terrible Japanese in there too, for you to laugh at, over we go, we've got, oh, that's the end of that. That's a shame, I was enjoying that. Dodgy DIY, um, all about it, love it. If you've got some of those mods on your car, sick. Over here, so we've got more carbon aero parts, super bonnets, and this is all from your, R-Y-O, make an wake of art. Okay, um, check that out. Over we go again, um, exterior, ooh. ooh, we're doing exterior parts, we've got some wheels over here from BIM, Drift Master, order, offset, customized setting system for two-piece model, excellent, you can make it happening, make it happening, wow, okay, that's uh, good, good English, over we go, GT Wing Fuji Spec M, Love it or hate it, the GT Wing is um, JDM as fuck. So get get with the program. I don't like GT Wings, they're gay. Okay, yeah, carry on. Well, you don't like JDM then. How to fit a wing. Um, so number one, get the wing. Measure to the center, looks like. Um, fit this. Measure that. Mark the center of that. Um, measure from the center to there the center of this, find out where the holes go, um, and then drill a hole. Okay. Um, oh, no, 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 we're not drilling a hole yet. We're still lining it up. We're still lining it up. Oh, you got to... Okay, so you get some colored colored tape to uh, for your old wing, to cover up the holes from your old wing. Okay, so... We line up the center line of the of the wing that we marked with the center line of the um, of the of the trunk boot lid, like that, and then we mark where the wing would be, putting tape on it and everything, like this. So we've traced it. Then we're going to measure it the end to end. Use a hole punch, not like a hole punch, like a, a center punch. Drill out the holes. Line it up. What have we done? We've, um, I'm not sure what's going on there. Oh, we've sealed it. 
Oh, no, no, we've skipped. We've skipped some. So drill from the... We use a bigger hole in the bottom so that we can get our uh, the nut and the uh, socket in there. Then we... What are we doing? You, using a little piece of uh, st stainless uh, plate, looks like. Not sure why. It doesn't say. Um... Um, it probably does, but I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to read it. It's probably for for the underside because these things, um, when they actually work, they actually work. If you put one of these on a cappuccino, it'll actually dent the uh, the trunk lid. So be careful of that. Finally, we're going to put some um, black sealant on there to uh, stick the ends on, and to I think that's what we've done here. To have used sealant here to to stick it down so that water doesn't creep underneath and go through those holes that you drilled. Over we go. HID headlights. Um, that's the way the Mercedes Benz. Over there, we've got an RX-7. We are fitting, uh, we're fitting lights. I mean, this is not rocket science. Um, if you don't know what you're doing here, pause it, have a look. Okay, over we go. The aero bonnet. What are we doing with an aero bonnet? One, two. We're gonna need. We just need some shift. We need uh, some spanners, uh, a ratchet extension, and two sockets. Uh, what are we doing? We are. We've. Uh, we take the bonnet off. Remove all the clips. Still removing stuff. Nine. 10, we're still removing stuff. Um, you fit the old parts to the new, oh, we, we're fitting a carbon bonnet, that's what we're doing. Fit the old parts to the new bonnet, fit the new bonnet, and there you go, finished. Looking good, looking good. Okay, we've got tail lights, Euro tail. It's weird that they call these Euro tails, when this style was started by the Alteza. Um, yep, and they're doing it to, a, uh, to an S14 here, S14 Sylvia. Uh, we've got other lights. I mean, this is very straightforward. Undo it, pull it off, put it on, connect it up. But whatever you do, do not use that. That is a Scotch lock. They've got two of them. They've got a red one and a blue one. Fuck you, Scotch locks. Fuck you, Scotch locks. Down here, winkers. Winker. A winker or a blinker. Uh, this is a special type of cover. It looks like you must uh, cut it out to get it to fit. Uh, that is ballsy. Um, looks like you're going to use a drill to, uh, to cut it out. But, okay. Uh, they're using Scotch locks again. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't use scotch locks. You'll regret it. I tell you. Paint it. Stick it on there, mate. Whoa, I haven't seen those before. Oh, I've never seen that before. This is um, one of those cool-looking mirrors, but they've made it ugly by putting a light in the side of it. How to do it. Take the old one off. Um, take the door card off. Take the old one off. I, 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 see, I see. Take the A... What is that? The A, uh, the A pillar? No, the the mirror. It's a triangle on the inside of the mirror. Take that off. Take the door card off. Take the old mirror off. Use a screwdriver to fit the the new inner. Um, fit the new. No, I'm not sure what they're doing there. Fit that. To, fit the the mirror to something, and then bolt it onto the car. Finish. All you need is a screwdriver. A driver of screws. Fender. Fender. Taking a fender off and putting a fender on. Um, so we need first thing you need to do is take the bumper off. That's a pain in the ass in an Altezza, let me tell you that. Um, take the bumper off. Make sure you don't lose any of the bolts and screws. Take the headlights out. You're going to have to undo the plugs for that, so they're using a, uh, a pick like I do. You're going to need a very small screwdriver to get in here to help you undo the... Uh, the front bumper and the fender. Uh, down here, be careful because there's often hidden bolts in between like the door jams and stuff. But uh, yeah, basically pop the fender off. 
press this to get the the winker or blinker side lamp marker whatever the hell you want to call it off um, and then um, fit your new fit your new fender bolt it down make sure it fits right keep bolting it on and you're done you're done now he's messing around with a side skirt here I'm not sh not sure why if of course if your car had side skirts which uh, this one does you'll have to take the side skirts off too over we go D max that's what we've got the hardcore of driving to wet dry and a lot of categories prox prox process R triple eights interior this book is dope man over we go interior mods again so good they're still using it you don't need it uh, fully visible like that though you could probably hide it a little bit better than that um, yeah it's not so important to see that um, what are we fitting we're fitting a boost gauge that's an expensive way to do boost gauge I tell you that um, so you're gonna need a T-piece on this is the fuel pressure regulator he's put a T-piece on it and then connect it up and then this vacuum runs to the back of the gauge you have to mount the sensor um, for this so they've got a, a sensor here so your uh, your boost this just runs to that instead of to the gauge there you go my bad this I forgot about this system these gauges run off electricity not off uh, not off actual boost itself so let's start again <laughs> this is the fuel pressure regulator he's put a T he's cut the hose put a T piece in there now this one will run to the sensor which is bolt which he's bolted to the uh, the shock or strut tower um, one side so that connects to there and then that's got a digital output that will you have to run your digital wires use a piece of wire to run it through get it through the firewall into the car this wire here connect it up to this bad boy connect this bad boy up to power um, and then bolt this to your dash somewhere like that make sure you use screws um, so that the next person who owns your car can swear at you for doing it um, in illumination so you have to connect power to it to illuminate it um, just run some wires through and connect it to your battery basically is how it's going to work although I thought illumination went off this thing but um, yeah anyway you get the point you get the idea now what are we fitting water temp gauge and oil temp gauge um, there they are you're going to need these tools you're probably going to need a few more tools than that to be honest it's not the most fun thing to do diy you can connect it to what is this the other oh, water the water is connected to what have they done there um the upper upper hose that's weird what are they do? oh so they drain the water drain the water out of the radiator tape up the sensor and then fit it to this weird looking top hose that you can buy you can do it that way the other thing you can do is you can buy an adapter block that has a fitting on this side a fitting on this side you cut the hose and cut a section out of the hose put the fitting in um, and then use two hose clamps to clamp it together and then your your sensor will actually go into the metal block I prefer those to these these are quite expensive the blocks are too but if you need to replace need to replace the hose, um, these are quite expensive as well. Now the oil, the oil sensor. You're going to need an oil oil filter adapter sensor adapter thing that looks like that. They're universal kits, and they come with uh, they normally come with two of these. This is important because it must match the thread of your oil filter. So that goes on there. Um, and then you just screw in the sensor done very easy then you put your OEM uh, filter back on be uh, be careful because um, sometimes you'll end up in a situation where your old filter won't fit on if this piece here is wrong so 
be careful to get something that fits your car properly. Now we've, um, what are we, running it through to the car, take your dash apart and then, or something, and then connect it to the gauge. I mean, they, oh, they've drilled holes in the dash to run the hose, to run the, um, the wires through. Ouch. Um, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Over we go. Um, fitting a seat. Well, this is really straightforward. Remove old seat. Um, put down some tape or something so you don't scratch the, the car. That is very easy to do. Remove your uh, seat belt bracket. Keep the bolt. Bolt your new... Um, oh, bolt this. Bolt your seat belt thing onto the new rail. Bolt the new rail into the car like that. Make sure it fits. I think we're pulling it back out of the car. Yeah, we, we are. Yep. Then we put it on the seat. Put the seat in the car. Um, don't forget to connect up any of the uh, the wiring for the seat belt. Otherwise, your seat belt light's going to be on and it'll drive you insane. Um, and then you just do it back up and you're done. Over we go. Roll cage. Um, this is a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more involved, uh, difficult one. You're gonna need a hammer, a bunch of different tools there. They've got an, like an, looks like an angle grinder with a drill bit attached to it. You are gonna need to drill holes in the floor. If that makes you uh, uncomfortable, then you won't be able to install a cage. Um, put the pads on. You have to you have to cut the pads if the pads are too long. Wait, where's one, two? One, put the pads on. <laughs> two, cut the pads to be the right shape. I mean, this is all just fairly straightforward. Fit it to the car, mark around it, remove it from the car, and then use a, a hammer and a screwdriver to chip away the, the sound deadening that's on the floor. Um, center. Center arch, center arch. I'm not sure what they're doing there. Um, I think that might be bolting. This, maybe this bolts to the seat bracket, the seat bolt, um, the seat belt bolt. Maybe that bolts onto there. That looks interesting. So we're going to need this bad boy because we need to drill holes in the floor for our bolts. Um, interesting how they've done that. Ten. Cover the, the, the underside plate that goes underneath this. Cover it in silicon or some kind of caulking. I would use uh, urethane sealant if I were you. That's so that water doesn't come up through the floor. Put your bolts through. Tighten them up. And um, yeah, make sure all of it's fitted before you tighten anything up fully. Otherwise, it's not going to... You, you might find that it doesn't line up properly. Well, some of the bolts won't go in. <clears throat> Next up, like, the final thing is to cut the carpet so it goes around the, uh, the cage. Over we go. We've got some parts for sale. Um, there's a lot there, so we're not going to go into that. Engine. Engine DIYs. Power up. Power up parts. We've got our mushroom. This is the thing I was talking about before, it looks like. They kind of actually, that kind of looks like a um, airflow meter, but that's what the, um, what do they have one of those, a picture of one? The adapter so that you can run your water temp. You just cut your radiator hose and you put one of those in. It looks like that. Over we go. Muffler. Yep. Fitting a muffler. These are a prick to get off. Use uh, silicon spray and that will help you. WD-40 will work too. Silicon spray is the bomb though. Um, yeah, I don't use these. I just use, I don't use monkey wrench. I just use, um, like a pry or a long screwdriver. If you've got silicon spray, it should come off. Get it off. Um, remove it and then fit the new one. Um, front pipe, pain in the ass. Um, you're going to need some dodgy sized, um, sockets and things like that to get into the tight places. Otherwise you should be okay. But it's basically just an unbolt the old one, put the new one on. Don't forget to use new gaskets when you do that. Um, now we're doing the super, super 
catalyzer. Super catalyzer. So a catalytic converter or a shokubai in Japanese. I don't know why they called it a catalyzer. It's a shokubai. What are we doing? We're using um, like loosening spray so that we can get rid of the O2 sensor. Um, <laughs> and then you just fit it like that. Just like that. Okay. Weird, but yep. Okay, over we go. What are we doing? Oh, the mushroom. Um, I mean, this is really straightforward. Undo the shit you need to undo. Fit the shit that it comes with. And, and then then smile, because it's, it's that straightforward. Like, each of these pieces will only fit in one spot. So, if you've got a, an actual kit, just follow the instructions. It's beginner class, that's right, it is beginner, super, super easy. What are we doing here? The normal change type. Ah, oh, so how to change a panel filter. Open the box, using the clips, put the new one in, done. Over we go. Intercooler, okay. This can be easy or this can be difficult depending Depending on what you've got, if you've got a kit, it will probably bolt in and you won't need to cut anything. This is a middle because, probably because of that. Six hours. Wow. Um, yeah, I guess depending on which car. On an Altezza, it'd probably take you more than six hours. Um, so you undo all of the things you need to undo. Take the bumper off. Undo the, uh, the standard piping. You're going to need some bracketry. You need to figure out how you're going to hold the core. That's what the brackets are for. Once you have the core where you want it, um, they've skipped this step, but getting the core where you want it isn't always uh, possible because of the bumper. So I recommend putting cardboard on the front and back of the intercooler when you're doing this. Put it where you want it, then fit the bumper and figure out how much of the bumper you actually need to cut before you commit to putting on brackets and shit, because it may be physically impossible with the bumper that you have. You might end up exposing the, uh, the intercooler. The intercooler might stick out so far that, the, that you have to cut the whole front of the, uh, the bumper out to get it to go on. In this particular position, you might be able to put it further back, um, but measure, 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 check, measure, check, test fit, but put some cardboard on the front so you don't damage the fins. Um, put the piping in, fit the piping, cut the, uh, or use some silicon spray on a, uh, on a razor blade to help you cut it. Make sure everything fits where you need it to be. You may have to trim some bits, um, and then you can spray some black paint where you've cut. Um, and then, um, yeah, there it is. What have we done? I'm not sure what we've done here. The body, body something. Oh, you might have to in a uh, in an S4 in a Sylvia, they had to cut a hole and use a smaller battery. So uh, yeah, just be aware of that. Use a smaller battery. This is a K car battery. This is what Ryan's car has in it. This style. Yo, okay, Ponsky, Ponske, Ponske Tarbin. Right, this means like a, a, a bolt-in turbo. You don't have to have anything uh, anything complicated. So bolt-in turbos would be basically everything that I showed you for the cappuccino anyway in that one particular video, except the RH4 that I showed you. Anyway, um, so we're, uh, we're doing a JZX 110, JZX 100, JZZ 30, JZZ. This is a bolt-in turbo. One, make sure you cover up the fenders. Pull all the shit off you need to. Use some tape so you don't drop anything down. Remove the uh, the old air box. Remove the pipes. Use a bolt loosening spray. Undo it from here. Undo it from there. Pull the damn thing out. Uh, take the exhaust manifold off. If you've uh, killed a bolt, you're going to have to take the bolt, the old. If the, if you've destroyed a stud, put a new stud in. Um, look at all your parts, put it all back together again with sealant. Use, what are they using? Kajiri. Um, I think that is, 
Um, I think they're using uh, anti-seize, actually. Using anti-seize on the bolts. Very good idea. Finish. Check it. Over we go. Camshaft. Now, this is not going to be a beginner one. This is the uh, expert, expert class. Um, not an easy thing to do, but... I've done it, it's, which means it's not impossible for a beginner. I'm not an expert, I've done it. You need to pull a whole shitload of stuff apart on the F6A to do this. Um, on this engine, I mean, you, you do too. You, well, I mean, to do this, you really have to take a shitload off any engine because the, the, the cam belt has to come off, which means the whole front of the engine needs to come off. Um, so it's a pain. It helps if you mark everything before you go, mark where that goes, mark where this goes, mark where everything goes before you pull it apart. That way it'll all go back together the way it was and that's what you want. Um, you're gonna need you're gonna need a torque wrench, you're gonna need all sorts of things. You, they've got a uh, pulley. They don't even have, yeah, there it is. There's the torque wrench there. That's very important. If you miss torque, these, if you do them up, and you're also gonna need the manual. If you don't have the manual, don't even attempt it. If you do these bolts, these bolts have a sequence. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There are 12 bolts holding this camshaft down. If you do it starting from one end and go to the other, chances are you'll snap the camshaft in half. Ask me how I know. I didn't do it on an F6A. Uh, we did it. It wasn't just me. Uh, Grant and I did that to an SR20 that we once owned fitted we didn't follow the uh, the tightening procedure and it snapped the camshaft in half the more you know be careful so mark everything pull it all apart be very careful um, pulling everything apart undo it keep everything uh, what is this the cam bearing caps keep looks like this kept them in or oh, looks like they're stuck they're sitting in gasoline or something weird um, Anyway, yeah, it looks like gasoline or oil it's sitting in. Not sure why you'd do that, but anyway. Um, looks, we're filing the edge of the camshaft. I'm sorry, I couldn't do that. 2,000 grit on the edge of it. Yeah, I couldn't do that, so I didn't do that. I used old cams, not new cams. These are probably new cams. Um, anyway, they want 2,000 grit on the edge. Okay, scary. Um... Oil them as you're putting them in. Tighten them up to the sequence. What have we done here? Um, they're using sealant to put this end one on. And then uh, finish. Do it all back up again. Reverse the order. Put them on. What else are we doing over here? Exhaust manifold. This has got to be... This is a medium, yeah. Undo the bolts that hold the thing on. Um, and then use... Um, they're using W40 here to loosen the bolts, undo the bolts, undo the sensors, undo bolts, undo bolts, undo shrouds, whatever's in the way to get to the exhaust manifold bolts, um, and then last but not least, remove your O2 sensor once it's out of the car, if that's possible. You, can you do that on the cappuccino? I don't think you can. You might be able to. Can you get the outlet pipe off with the O2 sensor on it? you certain... Oh, can you? I don't think you can. I think it's in the way. So, in a cappuccino, I think you have to take that off first. I always take that off first. Um, and then fit it to the... Fit it to the new... The extractors. Bolt them back on. Do them all up. Don't forget your... Ooh, what's this? You've clamped that. Why have you done that? I wonder. I never do that. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure why you've done that. Oh, so that you can so that you can feed this on. I see. Anyway, um, yeah, do it all up. Don't forget your gaskets. Away you go. Oil cooler kit. This is a fun one. It's rewarding. It's not difficult. It's only a level three. This is a beginner one. No worries. And they they rank it as medium, but this is just not difficult at all. Um, remove the bottom cover. Take the bumper off. Take your alternator out. You don't have to do that on every car, just some cars where it's in the way. Um, you're going to need to get access to your your oil um, your oil filter. So wherever your oil filter is, this thing goes where your oil filter goes, 
and then your oil filter bolts on the other side of it the same way as the um, the gauge sensor thing did um, we are oh, we we're doing a um, an oil filter relocation I see okay 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 so um, what we've done is we've removed all the shit out of the way one of these bolts onto the engine right where the filter would have been and then you've got another one that goes wherever you want it connected by pipes which is here so you've got these two bottom pipes here going to the engine which would go to this block and then you've got another block which connects to your oil filter as you can see here and then these two pipes run out to your oil cooler see they've got cardboard on the front of it that's so they don't damage it yep 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 put cardboard on it so you don't damage it um what have they done there yo what is that oh okay it's a heat sink for the oil filter weird flex okay cool um now it is um what is that not sure what that is weird anyway um oil f oil fill uh, oil cooler orientation matters this is the best way to do it because it can feed in the top and then come down the bottom if you mount it um if you mount it with the ports both at the bottom it will never fill up um and it'll get air locks and all sorts of shit don't mount it with the hoses at the bottom if you mount it with the hoses at the top it will always be full of oil and you'll never be able to have 100 percent clean oil through your entire system so i mean it for me it doesn't matter because i change my oil so regularly on i mean on, i'm talking about the altas i change my oil so regularly that it doesn't matter that this always has some old oil in it because my oil doesn't get time to become so dirty that it's going to be a problem but ideally if you can do it you want your oil uh, cooler to be mounted this way so that it always drains um, one problem with this is that if you don't have one of these which is a thermostat then um, this will drain all of its oil back into your sump and your engine will be like have this much extra oil in it at startup and that's not good so having some kind of uh, thermostat block like this is uh, very important I've never seen that before a heat sink for your oil filter very weird okay um, a blow off valve very popular mod because it goes psh super easy to install two hours at most it's a one star um, remove whatever you've got this is similar to the uh, to the cappuccino one the ABV this basically takes takes the boost and feeds it back into the system this takes the boost and, and ejects it out in the atmosphere which is why it makes the psh noise so take off the old ABV um, block off the pipe where the old ABV went in see that the recirculation pipe put on your uh, your new blow off valve put in a one way um, with a uh, with this trigger here with the vacuum line that feeds it so that's a one way and then um, you're, you're finished basically cut it to length plug it in you're good to go boost controller little bit more difficult yeah they've given it a three star this you need to interrupt the wastegate and the turbo itself on a cappuccino this is a nightmare it's so difficult to get at on a cappuccino um, it's not impossible but you while you're doing it you're gonna want to pull the turbo out of the car because it's such a pain in the ass to get to you have to take so many bits off and then it's still a pain to see so on a cappuccino I'd give it a four just because it's just a nightmare to get at you the pipe so you can see it really well here there's the wastegate there's where it goes into the turbo you need to interrupt that with a solenoid this solenoid tricks this into not opening and that's how you raise the boost with this um, fitting it you're gonna need a vacuum feed 
for uh, the uh, for what for what for what for what for what for the I forget oh, for the controller. My bad. Okay, so this is the solenoid. This is the controller. So this will do what this tells it to, but you need this plugged into boost so that it knows what it's actually getting. So you're you're tricking this by using a computer. Very, very cool piece of equipment. Highly recommended on a cappuccino. If you don't have one, get one. Okay? Not that difficult to install, just a pain in the ass. Turbo timer. I mean, it's there. I'm not going to tell you how to do it because I fucking hate turbo timers. Suspension. Very simple. Installing coilovers. This has got to be a one. It's a three? Really? On that car? Nah. Nah, 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 nah. See, the hardest part about this is going to be pushing this down so that you can get the shock back out again. Um, other than that, no, not on this car. On an Alteza, rear, absolute nightmare. You need spring compressors and, yeah, fuck, no, never again. Don't want to ever do that again. Um, you need to undo the uh, the brakes. The, not undo the brakes, but take the brake hose off. That's just a clip, and all you need is a pair of pliers. Undo the three bolts at the top. Undo the two bolts at the bottom. Um, you may need to fit a new bracket for your brake line to your new to you to your new shocks. Put that on. Make sure that's on there. Um, and you want to run. This is already attached. Look at that. Why is it already attached? Here they're doing the rears. Make sure your your arms are attached and whatever else. Correct torque settings. You need a torque wrench to do this. They haven't got it, but you really should have a torque wrench to do this because if they're loose um, yeah you don't want these to be loose so just keep that in mind you really should have if you don't have a torque wrench in your toolkit get one um, absolutely worth it um, finish he's finished already look at this he's finished um, you may have to jack the suspension up to get the uh, to get the rear arm to uh, fit. You may have to actually jack this up even. Depending on how your bushes are set up, you may need to undo the this back bolt here so that this will come back so this will come back up if this is shorter. Let's face it, it's gonna be, isn't it? This is shorter than it used than the standard suspension. This and this is going to fight you when you try to connect it to connect this back up to it again. So you may have to push it up with a jack. I think that's what he's doing there. Do these up. Um, word of warning when you're changing springs, don't just undo the top nut uh, because uh, that's a disaster. Use, uh, well, it can be because this is under pr the spring is under pressure and when you undo that bolt, the whole thing basically ex explodes in all directions from the force of the spring. So you can see he's using uh, spring compressors there to hold it together so he can pull it apart. Okay, we got brake caliper and rotor here. Two stars, medium level. Um, the Endless Racing 6, that's, a, that's not a bad way to spend $4,389. Um, yeah, okay, DIY start, number one, you need to undo the, undo the, uh, the brake line, you need to pull the old rotor off, uh, rotor, pull the old caliper off, give this a hit with a hammer, not what I would do, I would, um, wrestle with it personally, they normally come off if you, uh, if you uh, wrestle with it, but this is a, a rubber hammer, give it a tap, it should come off. You need to undo your brake lines. It's interesting, I only gave it two stars. This is not the easiest thing to do because bleeding brakes is quite dangerous if you do it wrong. Anyway, so uh, remove uh, all of the things. They haven't told you you need to undo the, uh, like take the caliper off. And uh, have they done that yet? Or they, maybe they haven't done that yet. Okay, hang on. New caliper, adjust it, um, fit it, okay, they're skipping a few steps, alright, we well, need to um, connect the, the oil, disconnect the old oil line from the caliper and put it on the new caliper, then you need to fit it, 
then where are we going? Six, fit the new disc, fit the caliper, do the caliper up, and then bleed your brakes. Interesting they used zip ties on this when they've got $4,400 brakes. Yep, zip ties, mate. Um, yeah, if I was doing that and I had the money for this, I'd do it properly. If I took that to a shop and I uh, found it looking like that when I was done, I'd be pissed. Anyway, over we go. Brake pads. Um, very basic. I mean, wait, wait, wait. This is a level two and this is a level two? No way. This is so much easier. Undo the caliper. Oh, they can just take him out through the back? Oh, that's crazy easy. Oh, that's not fair. With a cappuccino, you can't do it like that. You have to take the caliper off or bend it up out of the way. A lot of the time, you can just undo one bolt and then fold the caliper up out of the way, then pull the pads off, um, depending on the car, of course. Um, pull the old pad out. Squash. You're going to need to squash the uh, the piston in. They're using uh, vice grips. Not vice grips. Monkey, monkey wrench. Like a pair of plier type deal. Finish. Old pads out. That's the front. Oh, wait a minute. No, hang on. I'm not sure how the... What have they done? They've... Um, oh, don't... Yeah, don't forget the grease. What grease are they using here? They're using... Um, just says grease. Uh, break. Grease. Uh, spring pins springs and pins don't lose the springs and pins you're going to need those otherwise your pads will fall out um rears same deal they've had to oh here they go the, this one they've had to actually uh, fold the, the caliper up you can kind of see there and with this one you have to twist the piston in you can't just squeeze it this one you squeeze the piston in the front the rear you have to twist it and I believe that's to do with the adjustment, the auto adjust for the uh, handbrake. If you don't twist it, it won't go in. Um, you can use a special tool for that, or you can get away with using long nose pliers. He used long nose pliers. Um, brake lines. Redoing your brake lines. Uh, I mean, if you've already done this, then you know how to do this. 175 bucks to 385 bucks. Holy crap. Okay. It says beginner. Um, again, I wouldn't say beginner because you have to bleed the brakes and bleeding. If, you, if you've done something and you have to bleed the brakes, then you're in danger zone if you don't do it properly. So, I mean, changing them, changing them is easy. It's just undo them, put the new ones on. But it's the, the process after that that's a bit of a worry. Be careful. Um, undo the shit. Um, undo, undo do up done basically brake lines um pillow tension rods not difficult to do but if you get this adjustment wrong then your caster will be all up the shit and you're handling you'll need to go get an alignment basically after you've played with these you should fit these and then drive straight to the uh, your local alignment place and get them to set them up for you diy undo that Undo that, undo that, undo that. Okay, so they're using, a, they're using a tape measure to make sure they're the same length so that they don't have to take it to a suspension shop. You can do that. Adjust it, fit it, finish. If you're just doing that, yep, super easy. Uh, upper arm. The upper arm, easier than this. Basically the same deal. Undo, measure, fit, do it up. They don't have a torque wrench here. I would do it up with a torque wrench so that I had the right amount of torque on here and here. If these come undone, you're going to have a bad time. Over we go. Um, oh, the the kitty, kitty is this kitty kaku? Kire kire kaku up parts. I think this is the the cut cutting angle up. So, but this it's a steering angle. Eurus steering angle uh, washers. Now this is something you're going to need an alignment after you've done it. I believe. Uh, it's a middle. So undo that. You're going to have to undo this. Get to that. Hold it and undo it. Parts cleaner. 
put the washer on like this, put some Loctite on, do it back up, and then use a zip tie to hold the, uh, the boot back on again. Um, tie rod change. Super tie rods. Um, yeah, not really sure what's going on there. They're using calipers to measure something. Anyway, over we go. Ooh, okay. This is easy, is it? Okay, um, we're swapping from to a we're swapping from a four lug to a wait five lug to four lug. Oh, this has got the extra holes in it, so you can run either either or. Interesting. It's for uh, your regular Nissans, basically. Regular Nissans. Undo the center. Undo the pin. Undo the center bolt. Undo the caliper. Take the disc off. Pull the caliper up out of the way. Take the disc off. Pull the hub off. He's just he's just pulled it off. Um, you're probably going to need a slide hammer or something. That's probably not going to come off that easy. Um, bearing. The bearing face. Clean that up. I think that's what you want. They want you to do. Fit the new bits. Put the the uh, disc back on. Put the put the center nut. Put the pin through the middle. Um, wait, we're tightening it. Do it up. Tighten the pin. Oh, this is the rear. Now we're doing the rear. Okay, undo that. T undo that. Undo that. What are we? Oh, we're hitting the center. Interesting. Oh, because she's banging the uh, the drive shaft out. I see. Because this has got IRS, it doesn't have a solid sh solid rear. Um, a uh, solid axle. So you just tap that rubber hammer with a. Uh, yeah, we'll tap this with a rubber hammer. I'm not sure I would do that because if you damage the uh, the drive shaft, you can have a bad time. I'd probably do it with a nut on the end and then smash the nut. Um, undo this, and then you should be able to pull the hub straight off. Put the new hub on. Away you go. Now what are we doing? Power steering. Aftermarket power steering reservoir. I want to do this in the Alteza because I don't like the standard one. Um, I should do this in the uh, in the carry as well. That'd be pretty cool. Okay, so drain the old one with a some kind of pump. Oh, yo, check that out. They've used a regular like soap pump. You know, like the pump for your for your soap, and they've poked that in there in and they're just using it basically reverse to pump that's really good idea that's a really good idea why didn't i think of that that's brilliant so you buy the cheapest uh, soap dispenser that you can buy or like your old shampoo bottle <laughs> clean it thoroughly and then you can use it to pump your power steering fluid out you could probably use that for brake fluid too that is incredible um, brilliant idea. Need to do that in the future. Uh, disconnect all the lines. Undo the bolts. Lift this up out of the way. Um, have something underneath to catch any extra fluid. Fit the new one. Uh, what are we doing here? We are, we are, we are, I'm not sure what we've done. We've got the fluid, but we've got it upside down. I'm not sure why. Um, anyway, put the bracket on, do it up, fill it up. Not sure why we were holding the bottle there, but we were for some reason. Bracket on, do it up, fill it up, done. Want to do that. How much does this cost? $231. Um, uh, maybe, 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 maybe. Don't know. Don't know. Um, oh, the carry. Can't do it in the carry. The carry's got electronic power steering. So does the cappuccino. Carry, every, cappuccino, all electronic. The Altez is the only one that doesn't. This would be cool for the Altez. Who makes it? Billion. Billions and billions and billions and billions. Over we go. They've got billions of parts. None of them are very high quality. Parts. Tools, I mean. 
drive drive train the drive train nothing in this is going to be easy they're using a torque wrench here on a diff Ooh. Ooh. she's holding a holding a two-way up like it's a trophy uh you need special tools <clears throat> okay changing a clutch not i wouldn't give it five stars i mean it's a pain in the ass but it's not not overly difficult um okay we're doing why are we dealing with gear sets here um they're probably using an old an old uh output shaft input shaft old input shaft for a clutch aligning tool probably um take all the bits off you need to undo basically undo the shift boot you're gonna have to drop the transmission so whatever you need to do to drop the transmission drop the transmission take the clutch cover off have a look at the flywheel this is called a pilot bearing here you take the pilot bearing out it's not difficult to do you should do that this is called a throw out bearing replace that not difficult to do I'm not sure what they're using this punch for. Oh, the user. Oh, I see. Wait, wait, wait. What are they doing? Uh, they are the release bearing. Okay, they're punching the release bearing out. That's weird. I've always known release bearings to just be a piece you just bolt in. Anyway, um, here they're using electrical tape. Uh, as an alignment tool so you can line up the clutch uh, with uh, the the pilot bearing that's not going to work on a cappuccino because the pilot bearing is too small but I might on a um, on a small uh, if you use a really small socket extension but they've lined it up like that and that that al allows you to have the clutch aligned with the flywheel they didn't mach they didn't machine the notice they didn't machine the flywheel or anything like that just used it as is very uh very jdm spec um so line it up fit the pressure plate do it up in sequence torque the uh use a torque wrench make sure it fits properly um and then that's your, then you just reverse the process put the uh gearbox back in over we go what are we doing lsd this is not easy this is definitely expert this is the hardest thing you can do um, and the reason for that is the setup of this thing. You need special tools. Um, I've done it. It sucks. Um, yeah, you need special tools. So pulling the thing out, no problem. Easy. Putting the thing in, no problem. It's this center part that's the hard part. So basically you pull the cent you pull the diff out of the car and you end up with this. Now you need to take the back off, not difficult. Pull the drive shaft. Um, plates off not difficult then you take the uh, I call this a this is a sprocket or a gear you take the, the big gear off and you fit it to your new LSD that's not difficult you torque it up that's not difficult what is difficult is when you need to uh, what are we doing hang on, hang on the the bearings you press the bearings onto the onto the new diff new bearings onto the the diff well, i don't know why the bearings are on it already but um then you have to torque these up now this is where things get difficult because you have to adjust how much movement there is in like in one click of the bear because it's got like it, it's got like a click in it it's hard to explain how much does this rotate um, on its own? Like how much how, slop? How much slop is in it? If you've got too much slop, it's bad. If you've got too little slop, it's bad. So you have to use shims on either side to compress the bearing to make it uh, tighter or looser. That's these. This is special tools, and it's a special. Uh, uh, it's it's not something that's easy to do. Let's just put it that way. I have this. I did it in the uh, in the carry truck. I'm not 100% sure I did it right. If I have problems, well, um, I'll sort that out in the future. But it seemed right when I did it. Um, yeah, but this is expert expert level. Computer. Computer coupler guide. Wow. 
this is where your computer might be. Interesting. Oh, there you go. This is where your computer might be. Computer coupler guides. And it's got a whole bunch of computer couplers. We're not going to go into that. Toyota couplers. We're not going to go into that. You can pause it. Let's go back. Pause this if you'd like to have a look. Okay? You can go over here. Pause this. Wait, let's put your fingers out of the way. Pause this if you'd like to have a look. Over we go. Subaru, Mazda, Honda, Mitsubishi, bouncing all over the place. Pause this if you'd like to have a look. Um, oh, and over we go. Guide. Um, items. Good items to have. These are really good items to have. If you don't have these, you're going to end up crushing your sills. Uh, but if you've got side skirts on, you probably can't use those anyway. Magnetic uh, tool trays. I don't own any of them. Uh, folding. Oh, that, that's kind of cool, although I don't, I'm not sure I'd trust it. Yeah, I don't think I'd trust that with my life. I've got full-size ones like that in my Alteza that I take to the track. Um, like ramps. Ramps fit behind your seat. Good to have in the car. Head-mounted lights. Yeah, nice. I don't have one. Gloves. Well, I mean, I haven't worn... I never, never wore gloves until uh, Patrick sent me a bunch. So that's up to you. Thanks, Patrick. Lead light. Yep. Can't do without it. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, basically, basic protection there. Oh, the, the, first two finger, the first two fingers are fingerless, so you can still feel everything. Interesting. Over we go. What is that? What is that? Oh, that's a sticker remover. Ah, sticker remover wheel. Interesting. I need one of those. For the uh, Ebery. What's this? This is a airbrush. Uh, mighty back and brake. Oh, it's a brake bleeder. My bad. It's, it's a, a vacuum and a brake bleeder kit. Cool. Interesting. This is a. What is this? This is a. This is a battery charger. What is that? Computer memory keeper. It's a backup nine volt. Wow, I've never seen that before. That's a backup. It's a battery backup. Computer backup connects to a nine volt battery. Wow, mind blown. Never seen that before. Pical metal polish. Good shit. Um, five dash fifty six. Good shit. Parts cleaner. Yeah, you need all that. What do we got? Rib certs. Absolute must-have. I use them all the time. Most of my videos have got me riv-certing something in uh, uh, fitting fitting canards. Use a nutter. They call it nutter. Um, these clips. Having a selection of these clips. Zip ties um, or like sticky pads for zip ties. Electrical tape. Must-have. Zip tie skills. Different types of zip ties over here oh okay shops we're not going to spend too much time on shops no we're not advertising shops unless there's a shop i particularly know um which there isn't oh do it yourself tuning car making perfect guide diy do these teach you do these guys teach you how to do it mm -hmm. okay don't know option tires over we go, DIY trouble. DIY trouble. <clears throat> what do we do? You've used a screwdriver. Have you rounded the bastard off? No, you can't get it undone. What do you do? Use an impact driver to get it out. Um, I have exactly the same kit. Basically, you hit the back of it with a hammer, and um, that shocks the uh, the screw into coming undone um, so trouble one I wish I could oh yeah, yeah. you can't get the you, you can't get the uh, Phillips out using a screwdriver you need one of these um, there you go over here trouble two mm. What's number two? The trouble number two. You need uh, 
Rust penne. Rust penne. Rust, rust penetration. Um, I'm not sure what's happening. Can't get something out. Don't use these, use these. Um, that would be my advice. Um, yep, not sure. What are we trying to do here? Can't I can't get the uh, the hoses off using uh, some picks and pries is always a good idea. A pair of grips. Okay, over we go. Trouble, trouble, trouble. Ah, <laughs> the the mountains of the bolt are rooted. Tap and die set. If you know this channel, you know I use these a lot. Uh, what are we doing here? Our, uh, we've rooted the nut. How are we going to get that out? We're using a cold chisel or a chisel and a hammer. You can do that with a screwdriver and a hammer if you wanted to. How else could we get it out? Oh, no, no. Um, vice grips. Using vice grips can help you get that out. Uh, short of that, weld something onto it and then twist. What is this? This is a uh, recoil kit. I actually have one of these as well. You drill it out to a bigger size and then you can put this insert in and that insert is the same size as what you had originally, if you know what I mean. Drill it out, tap it, insert the sleeve, then the sleeve is the same size as the original size. <clears throat> Plastic repair. Um, yeah, um, I'm skeptical about this shit. It, um, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I've never seen it work, so don't know. But yeah, apparently it works. Not going to comment too much on that. Tools. Trouble, trouble, trouble. Can't get that undone. Super thin. Um, super thin. Spanners, very useful. Taking a uh, uh, a spanner and cutting it and then wrapping it in tape. I've done that before. Or buying cheap ones and you bend it to the shape you need to get into a particular angle. Very useful. Um, and these, these are key. If you don't have some of these, pick them up. Very, very useful. You can get them in various sizes, but like trying to get... This, this is... Diagram's perfect. Trying to get in between the tire and the front bumper or the tire and a side skirt. Um, one of these or like a ratchet style one. Very, very useful. This, I'm surprised to see this in here. I thought this was really dodgy. Uh, but I've done this before using a, uh, what have they got there? You're using a, um, like cutting off, a cutting a spanner in half. Why have they used an 11? What the fuck? Nothing's an 11. But yeah, like, perfect example. Trying to get in between the the O2 sensor and you just can't get past it with a regular one because there's not enough length, not enough room. If you've got a short one, no problem. And, I mean, you can probably, in Australia, you'd probably pick one of those up for a buck, two bucks from Super Cheap Auto. You just cut it in half. Who gives a shit if you wreck it? Just buy another one for two bucks and do it again. The only problem you don't get with one of these is you don't get the leverage so you're not going to be able to really reef on it but then again you can put this one on this end and then use it as a um as like a, a use it as a lever there you go over we go what else are we doing trouble use gloves yeah nah no thanks um oh jack up points be careful where you're jacking up if you jack up on the sill um, with uh, one of these or one of these you'll flatten the sill and fuck it uh, So don't do that use those rubber uh, Adapter thingies that we were looking at earlier. You can sit it on top of there. You can sit it on top of there You can put it on top of there. No problem um, On the FR you can jack up underneath the rear diff on the front you can jack up under the rear uh, trailing arm for the front you can use uh, What are we doing here? On the sides? What's that? What's he pointing to there? I can't tell what he's pointing to. The frame. The frame will be fine anywhere on the frame. Or the tow hook. 
I've seen people jack up on the tow hook without any problem at all. Um, trouble, earthing problem. Earthing problem. Try, trying to figure, I'm not sure what we're trying to figure out here. But if you're having earthing problems, get some sandpaper and then scratch the paint off. Like undo an earth, scratch the paint off. Um, you can put some grease on there so it doesn't re-rust and then just bolt it back down again. That should fix some of your problems. Having a test light is key as well. I mean, that's fairly self-explanatory. Here, this is cool. He's using dots as markers so that he knows where the pipes go back again. One dot here, two dots there, three dots somewhere else. Um, you make a video like this. Make a video um, so you can put it back together again. What have we got in here? What do we got? What do we got? We undo that. Undo that. Undo that. I'm not sure what the trouble is. Um, oh, make sure you match the driver side correct. Driver size correctly. Um, um, yep, not really sure what he's trying to warn us of. What have we got? Blue hot shot. Blue hot shot. Circuit and drift. D Max. Over we go. There's some aero. Aero from D Max. They've gone a four page spread. Yo. D Max had the money. Whoa, six page spread from D Max. Holy crap. Over we go. Um, tool shop guide. Basically, what's this? What's this place? I don't know this shop. What is this? I mean, this is Astro Products, but what's this? That's not Astro as well, is it? No, that's Haratool. Haratool.jp. I'll have to look them up and see if they're still there. Haze it. They, if you need it, they haze it. Gold and... Golden Ratchets. Right. Okay, I think everything in this store is going to be out of my price range. Astro Products. Cheap shit. They don't even sell that one anymore because it's so cheap. But um, I've got three of those, I think. Um, yep, I buy all my tools from Astro Products because it's the cheapest. Over we go. Um, Formula 1, not interested. Billions and billions and billions and billions. Over we go. And that is the end. Born to Drive. Bride Seats. There they are. I hope you enjoyed the option to do it yourself. I enjoyed this magazine. It's a long one. Uh, the Tuning Car Making Perfect Guide. Here it is. You saw it here. See you in the next one. Later.